Alright, so it's been about five years since part three was actually released, and now I'm finally doing my analysis of it. Sorry for the wait. Now, I'd just like to say that thematically, this could have been a much better episode than the others, and it also seems to be a little less riddled with plot holes this time, albeit some of them are really stupid. This is probably the strongest entry so far, but that doesn't necessarily mean I liked it. Seeing as how I don't like any of the characters, including the protagonist, and that this episode seems to have the worst understanding of pacing out of the three, I'd have to say that I didn't like this one either. That, of course, doesn't mean it didn't have good parts, but that kind of tends to be how these things goes. There's some good and some bad, and I nitpick the crap out of it because there's bad in it. That said, let's get started. Well, we're on our way. Probably 30 minutes out. Make sure everyone's prepped. Emotions might be running high. Carver out. If I find out you've been wasting fuel to keep that fucking heater going, I'll make you walk back. Nope. Froze my ass off. Just like you told me to. It ain't polite to listen to other folks' conversations. Then maybe you shouldn't talk in front of me. What, do you expect me to cover my ears? Maybe you should wait until you load me into the truck. Uh, oh, wait, this isn't a third-person omniscient or semi-omniscient game, so you're just delivering exposition. Got it. It ain't polite to listen to other folks' conversations. Has anyone ever taught you that? Where's your manners? No, stop! Don't hit my friend! Okay, so that's not what I meant by keep staring. How was I supposed to know that it meant to give him the evil eye? Is okay? The hell did he do to you? Hey! Did he hurt you? Hey! Hey! Uh, so what if he did? What could you possibly do about it? This will soon become apparent, but they made Kenny an absolute moron this episode. Sure, he's concerned about Clementine, and that's good, but there are ways to show Kenny is concerned without having him yell at armed guards. So, we can reasonably assume that this camp is at least five days walk away from the ski resort. Thus, it's at least a hundred miles away. I figure we got about four or five days to reach those mountains. Now- Five days? It's gonna be okay, but we have to keep moving now. It's our only choice. It's about two hours away if you're driving 50 miles an hour. Judging by that I don't think they're driving along a major highway, that there are probably abandoned cars on the way, and that Carver desires to save gas, that seems fairly reasonable. Then why would you stop for this girl to take a piss? So what, they stopped the entire convoy because one girl had to pee on what can, at most, be a three hour journey? Further, how did they even know that she had to pee when they have the group locked in the back of a semi? And shouldn't Kenny have done his little hunt for a weapon as soon as they left, in case they stopped, rather than looking after they had already stopped once? Alright, we gotta do something. Come on, anyone got anything sharp? Anything? We need to get these bindings off. What, did they think they were going to stop again before they got to the camp? Shouldn't you have been searching for a weapon this whole time? Just because this is where the narrative picks up does not mean that you just got in the truck. And what good is that gonna do? The hell is wrong with you people? We gotta get out of here. The truck's empty. First off, we're in it, so it ain't exactly empty. If you don't want to help, then just say so, okay? I'll do it myself. What sort of argument is that? You're looking for a weapon and we said there isn't one. Our bodies are not the sharp object you are looking for. Everyone help me, we gotta get out of here. But there's nothing we can do. You're all useless! Uh, I gotta tell you guys, um, not feeling super confident about this plan. Oh, I see what it is. Y'all are just getting a ride home, aren't ya? That's what's going on here. Say that again. I'd stay out of this, boy. Mister, I ain't a boy. No, right. You're a man. Mister, I ain't a boy. No, I'm a man. And I believe in a promise. You don't know that. Yeah? Well, I've been in this situation before. You ever been a prisoner? We've all been prisoners. Why do you think we left? Kenny's right. We have to do something. We can't just sit here. How is it the kid is the only one that sees what's going on here? Clem, the adults are talking. Rest of you, get this thing shut down! 
Does anyone know how to do this? Great. I can do it. Okay. Clem, the adults are talking. Does anyone know how to do this? Yeah. Clem, the adults are talking. It's too dark. <laughs> At this point, maybe Luke is the only hope we have. If he was gonna do something, he'd have done it by now. Do something? As in, outrun a truck? What exactly did you expect him to do? Who knows what he's dealing with? Anything can happen out there. I'll tell you what happened. He abandoned us. He didn't get caught, you idiot. You don't know that. I know he ain't here. He may not be around, but he wouldn't just leave us behind. That guy's a flake. I could tell the second I set eyes on him. I knew a second after seeing him that he would abandon me, even though I thought I was going to shoot him when I first met him. We're close. Okay, let's do this. They have guns. What exactly do you expect to do? I'm gonna punch the first son of a bitch I see. Then I'm gonna take his gun and use it to shoot the next son of a bitch I see. Just sit down. Kenny has never been characterized as stupid. There's not a single person on the planet who could possibly think that this is a good idea. Kenny can want to take action for sure, but he doesn't have to be retarded about it. This ain't your call. Hey, just, if something happens, just help out, okay? Don't, you know, get yourself hurt or nothing, but any help would be good. Hey, little girl, I'm about to punch the first son of a bitch I see. I need you to help with that, but not get hurt. Sound like a plan? What exactly do you expect to do? I'm gonna punch the first son of a bitch I see. Then I'm gonna take his gun and use it to shoot the next son of a bitch I see. Not sure whether this is contrived, convenient, or both, but it really doesn't help for the tension of further scenes when we know something as stupid as this can happen to relieve all the tension. All right, up and at him. Isn't this the sweet old lady we saw in 400 Days? Why is she a gruff bitch this episode? I'm sure plenty could have happened in all that time. It'd be nice to know what it was. Maybe it'll be revealed in the next episode since some of the colony members joined up in our group. We've got some familiar faces back with us tonight. Now, I understand some of you are confused as to why we bring these people back when they left us as they did. All these feelings you have of anger, betrayal, hate, they're all valid. No one needs to forget what they did, but we do have to find it in our hearts to forgive them. Why would you go through all the trouble of tracking down and dragging back these people just so that you can feed them, guard them at gunpoint so that they don't try to run away again, and then tell everyone in the colony that it's okay to hate them? Come on, we need you for something. Can I wait until morning? We're all exhausted. Just come the fuck on. I need him! I need my dad! I, I can't, he's... He looks after me. Your dad is retarded if he's been pampering you for two years after the outbreak. Regardless, you've been alone without him before, so what's new about this situation? I mean, Clementine has gotten you out of stuff before, so stop complaining, you inconsistent character. Grow up, Sarah. You're gonna get us in trouble. I don't care. And don't tell me to grow up. You're just a little kid. I'm older than you. Yeah, you are older, but you're scared to go piss when I'm not around. So, shut up, you argument from authority. You're gonna be working hard. That's for you. Yeah, it would be. Fucking Bill. Keeps me out in the cold, but at least I'll be comfortable. Okay, so I doubt he made you sleep out in the cold back when you first lived here. Further, you got a mattress just like everybody else. Even furthermore, I thought that Carver wanted his baby to have a safe place to live, so why leave his pregnant lover out in the cold? I'm just saying, it's not as bad as you think. We're building something great here, guys. A real community. Bill is making it happen. Look, I've made mistakes, and he's forgiven me. That doesn't make up for what he's done, Reggie. I know that, but I'm starting to see what this place offers. I didn't before, and with the accident, it's just that much more important now. Carver killed my friend Walter. 
Okay, I, I don't know what happened. But maybe he had his reasons. He killed Alvin, too. Well, yeah, but he was useless, so we're all kind of glad he's dead. He had this water over by the benches. Ah, that didn't go as planned. Should have actually made a plan. Man, fuck that guy. I don't think we can trust him. Where did this come from? Maybe if we got shown a reaction shot of Kenny as yes, things Reggie said started to piss him off, this wouldn't seem like it came out of frickin' nowhere. He could grit his teeth or purse his lips. Last we saw of Kenny, he was giving this guy a friendly greeting, so what happened? Obviously he thinks the guy should fight, but Kenny's being stupid with this fuck everybody mentality. You gotta take a look around. We gotta know if there's anything we can exploit to get out of here. We're in a tight spot. Gonna have to wriggle our way out. But then Reggie will get in trouble. If you don't make a bunch of noise, I'm sure he'll be fine. That Troy asshole's gone for now. This is our chance. Don't worry about Reggie. I'll go help run interference on him. How do you know he's not in some spot where he can see you, but you can't see him? Or how do you know that some other guards aren't watching you? What? Get up. Bill's gonna have a word. Why didn't Clementine get up with everybody else? Even if it's just to save time on animation, I'm sure there's some way you could have gotten around this ridiculous scene. There's been increased walker activity along the fence, so be mindful when outside the walls. Reggie, you're nearly back in. Keep following the path and we'll welcome you back with open arms. How'd you sleep? Let Reggie be an example I to you all. So tired. Salvation is. Why would you ask this? Do you know that I got hit for looking at the guy, and you know that it was because I pissed him off for doing something minor? There's no way that this girl is this stupid. And don't you know that Carver is aggressive? I mean, you did seem pretty scared when he showed up at the house looking for you. Wouldn't that indicate that you understand that you left because he's not to be screwed with? But a Kenneth will be taking over Reggie's well, duties don't have outside to be the wall. Rude about it. Michael will continue on I showing just his it was value. Nice to finally... Carlos! Yes? Your child seems to be in need of correction. Did One I... good smack across the mouth should do it. It'll make her think twice before opening it up again. Do it. I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. I'm sorry, sir. Stop! You're not coddling that girl anymore. Hey, I guess you're starting your day with me. We're loading magazines. Now, when I first saw this, I was wondering why they were just randomly loading magazines. Because if you leave them loaded for a while, the spring will wear out. But it does actually make sense that they'd be loading extra magazines, because they'd be preparing for a worst case scenario with the walker herd. So... this is good. You mean my first night in prison? It ain't a prison. More of a work release. Didn't they do those in prisons? Don't they have those in prisons? I got that. <laughs> Bonnie puts down this magazine after putting 21 rounds in it. It took her over two minutes to load one magazine, and she didn't even fill it all the way. So, Reggie gets thrown off the roof because his workers don't do a job fast enough, but Bonnie herself loads magazines at a turtle pace and it's okay? Fantastic. Hey Bonnie, is that girl down there? I need to come get her. Clementine was helping Bonnie out for literally less than three minutes before she got sent to do a new job. There was no time skip, they were having a conversation this whole time. Stay in here for a minute. I'm gonna radio down and find out what you're doing. Don't touch anything. You were the one that called us here. Shouldn't you know what he's supposed to be doing? 
You have to be tough, Sarah. Everything is harder now, but you have to be tough to survive. Everything is not harder, actually. Food acquisition is easier, seeing at night is easier, and protecting yourselves is easier. That's what this whole chapter was supposed to be about, weighing the benefits versus the negatives of living under a draconian leader. Or did we forget that somehow? Up until this point, I actually liked this scene. A little bit of exposition, a little bit of characterization, and levity. It was nice. Unfortunately, it comes to this decision where we have to help Sarah or focus on our own work. The problem is, it doesn't specify how we intend to help Sarah, or that we don't intend to return to our own post after helping her. Even if we do choose to help her, we're still technically two people doing the work of two, so I don't see how we ended up short on our quota. Nevertheless, here's a list of things we could have done to help her other than what the game has us do. 1. Tell her to get back to work. 2. Tell her to get to work because she'll get Reggie in trouble. 3. Have Reggie tell her to get to work. And 4. Show her what to do, then return to our own post. Which is technically what we do do, but somehow the game thinks we only did the job of one person. The conversation that happens at the end of this time skip is something that should have been said within the first five minutes. This isn't that hard, Sarah. I know, I'm just afraid I'll make a mistake. It won't be the end of the world if you do. Just keep going. So as to why it's at the end of a supposedly decent length of time, I can't tell, and it's kind of silly. You didn't do any of your work, Clem. <laughs> Shouldn't you have picked up on that? Weren't you supposed to be paying attention? You better have an explanation for this. And I mean now. Bill, please, just- Sounds like you're about to give me an excuse when I asked for an explanation. We'll get it done. Just give us some more time. We Sarah, she didn't understand. Nah, this ain't your fault. Yes, it is. When I asked for an explanation. Sarah, she didn't understand. Nah, this ain't an explanation. No, I gave no, you no, plenty no, of chances. Please, Bill, no, 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 please. Ah! Weakness, incompetence, it puts us all at risk, and it won't be tolerated. You know what else puts people at risk? Hot tempers, short sightedness, infighting. Those are just a few things. So let's talk about Carver's plan. What is the end goal of the society? A class of warriors that bully slaves to do the work for them? What kind of plan is that? Sure, that's happened plenty of times throughout history, but there are simply too many ways these people can escape on such a small plot of land with simply not enough personnel to ensure they won't leave. Not, not only does his style of governing scare off its citizens, but it also doesn't make the colony any safer and has been proven to be unsustainable by people having already escaped. The things he attacks people for are petty, too, and there's ostensibly no reason to be hostile to them other than the fact that he needs to be an antagonist. And who knows, maybe Reggie is actually putting the group at danger, but we can't know because we aren't given specific detail. As far as the narrative is concerned, Bill killed Reggie because his workers failed a task. That is the only detail that we actually have. So we have an antagonist or leader whose motives we can't understand, whose policies and actions put people at danger and don't contribute anything positive and will not and have not lasted, followers who follow him for ostensibly no reason, and prisoners who have escaped before that no doubt will attempt to do it again. Do you see the problem here? Get downstairs. Bonnie's got some stuff for you to do. Oh, hey. So, they want you to run some supplies out to the guys working at the expansion? Real simple, just take this over to him. This is the third job we've been to in an in-game time of about 10 minutes. Pacing, where are you? Isn't it a really stupid idea to have a fresh dead body outside your camp when you've got zombies outside? Especially when there's concern that a large group of walkers is in the area? Or, you know, these walkers that are attracted to blood? I ain't nobody's laborer. Fuck that. Let them do this shit themselves if it's so goddamn important. Get your fucking hands off you me, You ain't man. gonna force me to do this bullshit. I said get your hands off me. Or what? You gonna go tail on me? Do I really have to explain how this makes Kenny stupid? Why don't you just worry about yourself? Kenny, calm down. 
I want to, Clem, but this son of a bitch keeps I just want to get me. the work done, and... Shit! Fucking grab something! Well, there hasn't been any zombie attacks this episode, so we gotta have these zombies break in. Regardless of the fact that they should have been able to hear the zombies through that thin glass, and regardless of the fact that it's just because Kenny is an absolute idiot. We've seen in previous episodes, including Season 1, how zombies will just keep attacking and breaking into a building until they're distracted. Surely these people know that if they've been surviving for two years. If so, then why haven't they lured these walkers off, or dispatched people to take them out silently? These walls don't look sturdy in the slightest either. If more zombies see them trying to break in, then they will also try to break in. Hence, this should be a problem that they're working on today. They even mentioned that this expansion isn't sturdy enough to keep zombies out, so why aren't they killing them? <laughs> no, definitely don't close that door, that would be stupid. All that you would have to do is model the room without a door. Like, it's off the hinges and on the ground? Oh boy, here we go. So now let's talk about Carver's little chat with Clementine. Because there is a whole lot wrong with this scene. Now you might not believe this after what happened earlier, but I liked Reggie. He was a funny guy. He kept things light. You need folks like that. It's easy to let depression sink in during times like this. But he was weak. And I don't mean just because he was maimed. That wasn't his problem. He was weak of will and weak of character. And we can't have that around here. Not anymore. Not with what we got at stake. You have to be able to contribute. I'm sorry, but what changed? What do you have at stake now that you didn't have at stake prior? You have to be able to contribute. I thought you literally just said that it wasn't about him being maimed, i.e. his ability to work. It's about his character. Now suddenly it's about that he can't contribute. You have to be able to contribute. You're a murderer. You can try and call it something else. But I know what it is. What it really is. Listen, Clementine. It ain't murder. You see, Reggie put us at risk with his incompetence. He's had a string of screw-ups lately. Killing one in order to save many is part of survival. It's one of the tough decisions that a weaker person couldn't make. It's why it falls to people like us to lead them to safety. Do you understand? So what you did wasn't murder, you just killed him because he was useless. Look up kettle logic, because then you'll know what logical fallacy you keep using. Listen, Clementine. Killing one in order to save many, it ain't murder. It was around this time that I started testing all the ridiculous crap that I could say without consequence. And this is a ridiculous response if I've ever seen one. Well, I wish it was different, I do. But they are weak, and we are strong. That's why it's our responsibility to shepherd the flock, to keep them safe. It's their nature to follow, not to lead. You know what I wish? What's that, honey? I wish Kenny had killed you. And there's all the proof I need right there. You think anyone out there would have the balls to say something like that? What? So because he values strength, he tolerates not only insubordination, but open machinations of murder towards him? Yeah, that makes sense. Not only does he tolerate it, but he openly welcomes it. Because I guess we're the protagonist. So, you slap me for looking at you, demonstrating strength but compliment me for saying that I want to kill you, which is demonstrating strength. And there's all the proof I need right there. You think anyone out there'd have the balls to say something like that? There's no way you could have lasted this long otherwise. I realized it back in that cabin. You were scared, but you looked me straight in the eye, kept your nerve. That's what we need. If we're gonna get through this, the next generation has to be stronger than the last to lead us out of this. Okay, so by your logic, the only way someone can survive this long is by being strong. There's no way you could have lasted this long otherwise. Sarah is alive, and she's as fragile as wet tissue paper. Reggie has also survived this long too, before you killed him. 
I thought you said that he was weak of character, and it's up to people like us to lead people like him. Then you say that the only way someone could have lasted this long is by being of strong character. What? If Carver was just a babbling idiot, then that would be one thing, but the game has made a point of showing us how smart this guy is, and then when he talks, it's absolute nonsense. Cause we all know what happened this morning. I don't know what that son of a bitch is gonna do next. So you wanna ring the dinner bell for a herd of walkers to show up? How is that better? Cause this place will be fucking chaos when that thing hits. No one will be paying any attention to us. And that's when we go. It's our opening. We just gotta figure out a way to draw them to us. Your friend here wants to get us killed by lurkers before Bill can do it. Wasn't it a really stupid idea to leave these people who tried to escape last time in the same unguarded room so that they can try to escape again? Luke's in no shape to help us. You want to put our fate in that guy's hands, it's not happening. He did look pretty rough. You I mean, it was stupid to bring them back in the first place, but now they're unguarded again. And why is Mike not still totally pissed at Kenny? Last I remember, Kenny was being a moron and assaulted him, almost getting them killed. <laughs> Waiting for a giant swarm of the undead to pass by us seems like a really cool narrative element. Maybe if the narrative wasn't into this whole mindset of setting us against the colony, it could have been a really tense thing to react to. Instead, it feels like a cheap device to help us escape. Something this cool should be something that is focused on for an entire episode. I'm used to it by now. I wouldn't figure that. Peripheral vision, where are you? Well? Come on, Clem. Don't keep us waiting. You little devil. <sighs> Why do they have characters putting things in and pulling things out of pockets that obviously these objects would not fit into? Is it really so hard to show two seconds of her putting those radios under her sleeping bag? All right, we're all here. Someone's got to get the radio out to Luke. What's the problem? We should probably figure out who's doing what before we... You're right. You should have actually done that last night. Get over there. And how is it that we're repaid for our trust? With treachery? With deceit? With theft? They caught him. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Maybe you... It's right here. I got it. It's alright. Sorry about that. Not sure what I was thinking. Three. gosh. Oh my gosh, seriously? Not Luke? Did you forget that he was in the same room while you were writing this, or did you just not even care? No, 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 you're right. Clementine's the protagonist, so she should be the one who you asked to help, because she's the protagonist. Now, aside from the fact that no one is even considering that they may be killing innocents by attracting this zombie horde, the scene where everyone discusses their feelings about whether or not to leave tonight is fairly well done. I'll be honest, I was pretty zoned out by this point, but everyone seems to be making fairly valid points that made sense with the narrative. Then we just need someone to go set off that PA, right? I mean, you never bother to explain who's supposed to do that. Wait, wait, hold on. She's the plan? Why is it always me? Funnily enough, Clementine, I was thinking the same thing. You want to disrespect me? Fine. You want to throw away the life I'm trying to build for us all? Then fucking fine. Want to run off with this dog shit group of crippled fucks? Then... <laughs> Be my good fucks, then fine. Be my guest. 
But I will put a bullet in you and that baby. Be okay, so I'm sorry I interrupted this and didn't get the whole picture, but... Okay, so the whole deal was he wanted to get the baby back, and now he's saying he's willing to kill it? I sincerely hope that there was some further explanation to actually make that not sound completely retarded. You're all just gonna let him do this? Yes. There ain't one part of that son of a bitch I don't hate, but that does not make this right. I'm not going anywhere. It's gonna get messy. I know. Look at you, you fucking ingrates. I don't even know how good you got it. Why would you leave me? All I ever gave you was my love! That's about everything I noticed. Like I said, I started zoning out towards the end, but as far as objective things wrong with this, that's about all I could see. Again, preference-wise, I didn't much care for this episode either, but that doesn't mean other people can't. Objectively, there were still issues, but they seemed to be less numerous than the other episodes, so I guess we're improving? Hopefully, by episode 5, we actually have one downright excellent episode out of this season 2 of The Walking Dead. And now, episode 5 of Wolf Among Us, now you stand alone. And you will not be leaving without punishment. <laughs> <laughs>